Hey guys, in this video we are going to implement the school live search in our IMS system. So once we search for a product, it will automatically pull the data from our database and we can select and add it to our order items. So let's get started. Um, so first thing we need to do here is in our search input container, we're going to create a container of the search results and then we'll need to design the search result entry first and then after that we're going to implement the GS file so let's create a dev and this one let's call it search result container main um, so here we're going to add a row and let's just add a class search result entry and then here um let's add a column three and then column six so here we will display the image uh, for now let's just grab or hard code the link of the image so it's working Next is we are going to add styling. So let's set the width of the image to be uh, this size, this one, and then uh, the Nescafe or the product name. Let's set the font size, and then let's transform them to uppercase and make the letter bold so and let's add padding to our container so this looks good and let's set the background and that one and add the border uh, let's set the color to that one uh, increase the border and then let's remove the border on the tab so now let's go to our css file or the style sheet uh, this one and then register or enter the stylings uh, the image Let's just add a class first, so it's our result image. And then here we're going to set the width. Um, so this one, search result product name. And then here let's add that class, copy and paste. So another dev can set here the price of the product so this looks good let's just add styling to the price so let's copy paste the style um, let's just increase or decrease the width of the image Then here we can, hmm, I think we can just put it below inside the same column. So this looks good. And then margin bottom, let's set. Then add some padding. So let's just grab it and then update the style sheet. So let's see. So it's now looking good so let us um, try to copy paste we have two entries and then we can make additional styles so here the searches will entry should be beside the row class so let's add the border between the entries and maybe padding 
so let's set the color and the width of the border so now let's copy this and remove that fresh so as you can see it's looking good so let's try to set or change the background image so alternate image color or background color for the search result so this one looks good i uh, think use this one let's see if this works does it work um so let's remove that one so now it's working um so here we can now implement the javascript file so can just create here uh, so this one is my old file I could just grab this one here and explain to you what the code is so this is from the inventory system live search feature we can just use it inside the POS so here this will be the the function and then here this is the delay so once we change or type the key this will be the delay between the typing and the fetching of the data so now below is the event listener so once we click the key up or once we type so let's see here as you can see if we type it shows the elements so here we are trying to select the search input so we're trying to add uh, if element if they type on the search input element then we're going to get the search term or the value so if we refresh as you can see the value is fetch are shown in the console so next thing is we need to clear timeout so basically once we are still typing we are going to clear the typing timer so basically we don't need to uh, call the or pull from database every time we type so this will remove that one so and now here this is the function uh, that will pull the, the, the database and then that interval which is 500 milliseconds so after 500 milliseconds once the user stop uh, typing it will trigger this function so let's try let's just return so type after 500 milliseconds as you can see even if i type multiple string it won't trigger since they have the clear timeout now we are going to create the search db function so the search db is basically we'll call this function and then we'll pass the search term as a parameter or the argument for that function so if we refresh so as you can see it is shown in the console next thing we need to do is we are going to get the search result container and then here we are going to check first if the search term or it's empty or not so if it's empty then we are going to hide the search result container main else here we have to display set the style to black we'll show the search result container and then here we have an ajax request and we need to create this file so live search.php then here we have php file so let's try and then check our network and as you can see here it triggers or it pulls or shown this echo so it's working correctly so now this is from my old code we'll just grab this one here so first thing we need to do is we'll need to add a connection file 
and then here this is the search term so this is uh, using get method and then here we're going to trim and remove the space I mean remove space and transform to lowercase so uh, the search term that's what we use in our front end so next thing we need to do here is uh, here we have query uh, let's just grab this one so let's search from our database uh, let's remove do a cleanup of this then here the statement so here we are going to pull it from our inventory table uh, so in our connection file we have multiple connections so here we are going to use this one since we are going to pull from the inventory uh, database so let's just use global con and then here we are pulling from the products and search by product name using the like uh, the search term so let's just beautify this one so ordered by created it so now what we're going to do next is execute refetch and then here we have return as an array so let's try fresh so nest let's try so as you can see it is showing all the product with nest on the name let's try mi so you can see we have two products with mi on their name so let's remove this one and then here what we're going to do is the length so let's return the rows as the data and then we'll count the number of rows so let's try ni so as you can see length one and we have the data so here the table rows so we don't have this one uh, first is we'll just need to check the length if it's zero then we'll show the no data found so here we'll just remove this one we don't need this uh, we're just going to move it on the script um, here so let's just comment this out first so you can see we have no data found now we're going to add some styling to this um, uppercase maybe add a padding 20px so uh, here uh, we're going to wrap it in a p class and add this class then register this one to our style.css file so let's remove I mean paste so as you can see no data found so let's continue so we have this HTML file where we put the result then here we don't need this one so first thing we need to do here is let's copy that one then inside is going to loop to the data um so we have the data and this is an array so search result response data then here we can just loop to the search results and then here let's log first to check so as you can see it is showing the products so now let's space this one so remove the comment So then here what we're going to do next is as you can see it is showing the data but we we'll need to change the values so we have the product name so this will be row product name and then we have the price and then the image so we're going to remove that one and replace it by the correct image let's try so as you can see it is working correctly 
so it's now done but here we need to add this feature so once we click on the search result it will have the same function on the uh, the page where we select the product and we can add it to our order item so here what we're going to do here is going to add here a an ID of the product so same with this one uh, this is the old script that pulls or add the item to the cart so we need the PID and then here let's say um, so this is the search result once the click let's make this one a pointer so it looks like clickable and then here um, actually we have already that one uh, we're going to register this one to our script so if the user also click on that class so here we are going to get the ID of the, the product so let's try we click so here we have an error data set so for the data set uh, we'll need to add an if else statement so if the class list contains this one then we'll pull directly or set the target L to that element which is this one so as you can see here we are now able to have that function so if we click you can add new product and it will add to the order item.